Algebra students, how you doing? Today we're going to be graphing absolute value functions. So uh, what is an absolute value function, you may be wondering? Well, uh, let's do, let's start by graphing the simplest absolute value function that we possibly can, and that would be the function uh, y equals the absolute value of x, okay? Uh, we frequently call this the parent function of absolute value functions because all absolute value functions come from this one. Okay, let's remember what the absolute value means. It means the distance from that number to zero, okay? So if it's a positive number, the absolute value of x is simply x. It's just that number. If it's a negative number, then the absolute value of x is going to be, well, negative that number. In other words, you make it positive. So anyway, the absolute value of negative 4 would be 4. The absolute value of negative 7 would be 7. Because for all real numbers, that's the distance that it is from uh, to 0. Remember, the absolute value of a complex number is a little more, well, complex. But we're just dealing with real numbers for right now. OK, so if I'm going to graph y equals the absolute value of x, let's just split this into two different pieces. First, let's look at what happens when x is positive. When x is positive, this is just like the graph of y equals x. Well, I know what that looks like. Uh, so I'm just going to keep x positive, and I'm going to graph the, the line y equals x. OK? It's just a diagonal line, cuts at a 45 degree angle, right up like that. OK? Easy enough. Well, what about when x is negative? In other words, the left side of the graph. Well, when x is negative, normally this line would go down like this. But we're taking the absolute value, which means it's going to flip up like this. And so it's just going to turn the corner. And it's going to go through points like negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 2, and negative 3, 3, because the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. And so you get this nice little V shape like this. This is what the graph of, the absolute val of y equals the absolute value of x looks like. So uh, let's look at a, uh, another graph. Let's look at um, y equals 2 times the absolute value of x. All right. Well, when x is positive, this is just like saying 2x. I know what that looks like. That's going to be a, a line going through the origin with a slope of 2. And so. It goes like this. When x is negative, well, let's say if x were negative 1. If x were negative 1, then we would have 2 times the absolute value of negative 1, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. And if x is 2, then you get 2 times the absolute value of negative 2, which is 4. And so it goes up and up and up like this. And what we end up with is a mirror image, a nice symmetric graph that is very similar to our graph here. It's just that it's been stretched up, OK? Every y-coordinate in this graph is, is twice as high as the y-coordinates over here. And so what we see is, OK, you have a line with slope of 2. And then over on the other side, you have a line with slope of, well, negative 2, OK, because it's nice and symmetrical. All right, well, let's keep going. Let's do, uh, let's do a graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus 3, OK? Now, this one, OK, remember, y is the absolute value of something, OK? What's the lowest number that you can have as an answer there? The absolute value of something uh, equals y. Well, the lowest number would be 0, OK? Because you can't, the absolute value of something can be 0, but it can't be negative, all right? So that means y can get down to 0, but it can't get negative. Just like in the prior two graphs, it'll all be north. It'll all be above this, uh, the, this x axis here. So when would y be 0? Well, y would be 0 when whatever's inside of here would be 0. And if x minus 3 is 0, that means x would be 3. So when x is 3, y is 0. And I'm going to plot that point. 3, 0. OK? 
So now we have the point three zero. At every other time, y is going to be positive, which means my graph is going to go up like this. And uh, as a matter of fact, when x is four, y is going to be one. When x is two, y is also going to be one because we have two minus three is negative one and the absolute value of that is one. And what we end up with is a graph like this that uh, looks very similar to our graph of uh, y equals the absolute value of x. As a matter of fact, let me just draw y equals the absolute value of x in red and you'll see just how similar this is. Our green graph, our green graph y equals the absolute value of, uh, of x minus three is exactly the same as y equals the absolute value of x. It's been shifted over exactly three units. Now it's counterintuitive because usually when we see minus three, we think, oh, minus, that's negative. That's going to be off in that direction to the left. Not the case this time. Okay. When you have the absolute value of x minus three, you actually move this over to the right three units. If you had had x plus three, then it would move to the left. So like I said, this is counterintuitive, but that's just the way it works. All right. Uh, one more. Let's look at, uh, actually not one more. We're going to do a few more, but let's look at y equals two times the absolute value of x minus three. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, here it is. This should be, well, it's still going to have a vertex. Remember vertex is just the fancy word for corner. It's still going to have a vertex at the point three zero because when X is three, this becomes zero and the whole thing becomes zero. And I know that it's never going to be less than that. So that means my vertex is right here at this point. And then after that, it's going to go up two like this. And then up to this direction. Now, why is that? Well, this is when X is three. Let's say X is four. We have four minus three, which is one. The absolute value is also one times two is two. So that's going to get us that point right there. And if I keep on counting up, you'll see that every time X increases by one, Y increases by two, which means this has a slope of two. Likewise, if I were to say uh, when X is two, I'd get two minus three is negative one. The absolute value of that is one times two is two. And so you get this point here. And each time X would decrease by one, Y would be increasing by two, meaning that we would get a line with slope of negative two there. So as we've seen in all absolute value graphs, the, the slope of the left side is the additive inverse of the slope of the right side. So if the slope of the right side is negative, the, the slope of the left side will be positive and vice versa. Uh, so basically this is the same as the graph of y equals x minus three, except it's been sh uh, stretched up. Or you can think of this as the same as the graph of y equals two times the absolute value of x. It's just been shifted over to the right. All right. Now let's look at the graph of y equals negative one half times the absolute value of x plus four. Okay. This time we have a positive number. Well, a number that at its lowest will be zero times a negative number, which means this product here is always going to be negative, except when this thing is zero, it'll be zero. That means its highest point is actually going to be at zero. So Y is going to be here or below. Now, when will it be zero? It'll be zero when this part here is zero. And that means X has to be negative four. So let me plot that point. X is negative four. That's one, two, three, four. And that's going to be my vertex, but it's going to look a little different this time. Because like I said, this time it has to go down. All right. Well, how, how steeply will it go down? By that much. Our slope of the right side is going to be negative one half. So I'm going to go down one over two, down one over two, down one over two, like this. And I get 
a nice looking graph. Pretend that's straight. Uh, there we go. It's still a V shape. It's just been turned upside down. Okay. And why has it been turned upside down? Because that number right there is, uh, is negative. Okay. This number is always the slope of the right side of the graph. One last, uh, one last graph I'm going to give you. And that is, well, let's do this one in green. Y equals negative one half times the absolute value of X plus four plus three. All right, here we are. Okay, looks kind of complicated at first, but actually what we notice is it's the exact same thing as this guy. It's just shifted up three units. My Y coordinate in every single point is gonna be three units higher. So we're just gonna take this thing and move it up. Okay, we can do that. Uh, the vertex of this original one was uh, negative four, zero. So now it's gonna be one, two, three, four, negative four and one, two, three up there. Okay, so that's our vertex. And then we'll go to the left, down one over two and down one over two. So we get a graph that looks like this. And we have the vertex here that is negative four and three. Okay. So now we're, we're, uh, we're, we're approaching the end of the video where what we find is that we, we're going to have, we're, we're, we're going to see graphs in the form of Y equals a number here times the absolute value of X plus or minus a number here, plus another number here. Now, what do those numbers mean? Well, here, let's, uh, let's make this a little clearer. Here you go. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Y equals something times the absolute value of X minus something plus something. Now, what are those somethings? Well, this something is the slope of the right side, okay? You know it's gonna be a V-shape. And so A is the slope of the right side. If A is really big, it gets skinny. If A is really small, then it gets wider, okay? If A is upside down, the whole V turns upside down. Now, what about this H and this K? Well, it's quite simple. The point H, K is the vertex, okay? That's the corner of your graph. And notice that this is H, uh, X minus H inside of the absolute value. What does that mean? It means that the vertex of my, uh, of my graph is the point uh, four, two. Then what I'm gonna have is the absolute value of X minus four plus two. Now, how steep is it? I don't know, it depends on what that A is. All right, okay. Well, that's a, that's a good primer. That's a good introduction to uh, uh, graphing absolute value functions. I hope it was helpful. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.